very disappointed um, that we weren't able to come away with the win tonight. Um, I thought it was a, just a really high level, excuse me, Big Ten game, which we knew. You know, you know what you're going to get from Rutgers. Um, old, tough, physical team, you know, very well coached. Um, I think people are starting to realize that's what you're going to get from us as well. Um, you know, I thought there were runs throughout the, you know, that our guys hung in there at times when we would have breaking points, whether the lead got to eight or nine points. Um, we hung in there. We found a way to get some buckets. We found a way to make a few runs, and then we had a great run there uh, to get the lead. You know, inside the last two minutes, we had the four-point lead. Uh, we had a foul there, um, you know, against Mulcahy. Uh, up on top of the floor. He made two free throws. Um, give them credit. I thought they had a good defensive possession, kind of took us out of our set there. Uh, Chase missed the pull up. And then, um, you know, we just, you know, to, to lose Spencer there, that was tough. He had a great game. Give him credit. You know, Cam, six six out of seven from three, banked the one, you know, a couple minutes earlier. But, um, you know, we just have to have more discipline in that. When you have a two-point lead, you know, the one thing we always say is no threes and, and no and ones, you know, because worst-case scenario, if they score a two-pointer, we got the ball with the last shot to win the game. So, um you know, it was disappointing not to be able to get those last couple stops when we needed to. Super proud of my team. Uh, love the heart. You know, love the fight. Um, they're a difficult team to play against, you know, with the way they change defenses and press and kind of junk up the game, which I say in a complimentary way. You know, they just they, they force you. They take you out of what you want to do. They force you to just make plays. You can't really run plays against them. And, um you know, they made one more play than we did tonight, you know, unfortunately. So crowd was amazing. Uh, man, you know, I said it all the time, you know, when 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 our students show up like that in full force and, and this this can be a really difficult place to play for other teams. Thought the energy in the building was awesome. Our players fed off of it. Um, you know, I hope they'll stick with us. You know, we're we're not perfect by any means. You know, I'm pretty sure that not anybody's going to go undefeated in the Big Ten, so there's going to be games like this where you know you maybe come up a little bit short, but hopefully the the students and the fans will stick with this team because because they're really fighting hard and they're a fun team to get behind and and we need them you know when we have these home games. Um, coach, shooting numbers on the field took a big jump in the second half. How did it happen? What was the change at halftime? I just thought one of the things we talked about was, you know, this team makes you just, like I talked about, they make you just make plays. You know, they, they do a really good job with their presses and kind of running guys, and they were making a concerted effort to get the ball out of Chase and Boo's hands. And I didn't think we were as aggressive as enough as we needed to be in the first half. I thought it kind of stood us up a little bit. In the second half, I thought we attacked more. You know, when we, when we did have opportunities to in transition, you have to attack them. They're really good when their defense gets set. If you do have numbers against them, whether it's long rebounds, steals, things of that nature, you need to try to attack and get good looks. But, you know, I just thought we had a little bit more of an attack nature in the second half. I thought we got into the paint a little bit more. Uh, certainly we were able to get into the bonus, you know, which which got us to the line. And then the shots, you know, we, we made seven threes in the second half. You know, guys stepped up. Julian made two big ones. Ty made one. Robbie made two. Uh, so other guys, you know, they they were going to try to make it hard on our guards, which a lot of teams are going to try to do. I mean, those guys have been great for us, and that's where we need these other guys to to continue to be threats uh, to make teams pay if they're going to do that. Coach, you talked about them taking the ball out of Boone Chase's hands. Can you speak about the lift Ju Ju and um, Robbie gave this team? Yeah. All the lines? Yeah, no, it was huge. I mean, uh, for those guys to step up and make big shots and because um, they were running doubles at both of those guys, especially in our pick and roll actions and, you know, making them give it up. And, you know, Julian hit three big shots. You know, he, I was really proud of him. He missed two free throws. You know, we got the offensive rebound, kicked it out, and without hesitation he knocked it in, had a big pull up you know, late in the clock from the elbow and then obviously had the bank three at the end of the clock, which gave us the four-point lead. So, you know, Robbie hit a couple big shots and, and got aggressive when we needed. But we're going to have to do that. You know, teams are teams are smart in this league. Um, you know, teams are going to try to make it hard on Boo and Chase. They're going to try to take them off their sweet spots and, and make other people hurt them. And, you know, I'm confident that in our guys and um, that they can step up and, and do that as we continue to move forward. Uh, you chose to 
have your guys inbound the ball and try and attack after the made free throw at the end of the game rather than call a timeout. Can you take me through your thought process there? Well, we called the timeout before the free throw. So we set up our play before his first free throw. Yeah. Um, after the free. Sorry. Oh, after the make. Yeah, we yeah. wanted to attack because they're, they're a pressing team. And, you know, it was my, more my respect for – I felt like if we let them set their defense – that they were going to get into some kind of trapping scheme. I felt like if we could get the ball in bounds and kind of attack quickly, um, that we might be able to get Boo, you know, loose, chase loose. I know they did a good job kind of squirting the ball free and, you know, it became a held ball. So that was just a judgment call to try to attack without them, you know, but it's it's nice to set up plays sometimes and, and organize, but also when you play a really good defensive team, it allows mm-hmm. them to get their defense set too. So we just made the call to, uh, to play it out. Um, you know, felt good. It was in Boo's hands. You know, that's the guy. That's what I would have drawn up. You know, if we would have called a timeout, I would have put the ball in his hands in one way, shape, or form. So he already had it. Uh, he kind of got uh, pinned in on the sideline there, and, and they were able to strip the ball and, you know, heck of a defensive play by them in that situation. Alex Carbonati, WRSU. Coach, this crowd definitely picked up the energy, made it such a great game back and forth. And the way it ended, the crowd was in it left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we're in northern Chicago. We're not in the downtown area. But it sounded like the madhouse on Madison tonight. That's <laughs> yeah. how crazy it was. Yeah, it was awesome. Take me through how how this team was able, or, or this crowd was able to just will you forward, keep it su- such a close game. And even though you fell short, how much uh, credit is due to such a great atmosphere and a great fan base? Huge. Huge because what the crowd doesn't understand is these games are so physically taxing on these teams, and you can really be uplifted by the energy of your crowd. And I thought as our guys got a little tired because we were teetering, you know, we were they made a little run at us. Mulcahy, Mulcahy had a big three, you know, that I put him up eight or nine. You know, I felt like we were getting a little bit tired, a little bit worn down. Uh, we were able to get a basket, and I just thought the energy of the crowd, you know, really gave us that juice that we needed. And it's important in this league because most everywhere you go, you know, like that's what Rutgers gets when they're at home, you know, and and that's what a lot of these teams get when they're on their home floors. And, you know, we've worked hard. I think people are rallying around our team. I think the students are seeing now that they've been back uh, after winter break and, you know, the effort we gave in the Illinois game last week, the effort we gave tonight, you know, I just I hope they stick with us. You know, it was a tough loss. I mean, um, but we need them. You know, there's no way. I don't think if we don't have that student section tonight, I'm not sure we make that run, you know, and take the lead because I thought they really gave us the the energy and and the fight we needed when we were struggling. And, you know, hopefully when we come back, we got a couple on the road, you know, now. But when we come back home, we got seven left at home. We're going to need them every step of the way because they matter. And uh, it was awesome atmosphere. And. You know, as a coach, as someone who's loved college basketball my whole life and played it and and coached in it, like you you love these atmospheres, you know, home and road. And, you know, we've had it at times, you know, but not quite consistently. And and I'm just hoping the rest of uh, this year, you know, because we have a good team. You know, it's and I told our guys it's one game, you know, just like we had a great win against Illinois last week and we went on the road and had a really good win at Indiana. Um, That's what this league is going to be this year. So you you have to be resilient. Um, You know, we had a chance tonight. You know, we had the lead there with a minute to go. We didn't get it done. Tip the cap to Rutgers. You know, they did. And now we got to, you know, you got to move forward. You got to get ready for the next one and, and be ready for our weekend game. You know, we talk about the Big Ten atmosphere, fan base, team in general, what have you. Northwestern hasn't been the best team the past few years, but this year you're really excelling and you're really standing out. Before this game, you won seven of your last eight. How has this team been able to be so unique this season? I just think, the, the first of all, the, the leadership has been fantastic. The leadership of Bowie Audige and Robbie Barron. Um, you know, they've set a tone of, of winning. You know, and and that being the only agenda, um, I think you see when these guys play. I mean, look look at how they play with a lot of heart. They play with a lot of fight. Like I said, we we have a lot of things. We have a lot of flaws. We have a lot of lim- we're not a perfect team by any stretch of the imagination. But the one thing I can say about our team is I know when they show up, they're going to give everything they got. You know, and and as a coach and hopefully as a fan base, that's all you want out of your team. You know, give 
give what they can give. And hopefully as we can continue to play, I, I think we've made strides. We've gotten better offensively. We're figuring some things out on that end of the floor. Um, but our defense has to continue to carry the day and, and hopefully put ourselves in these positions. That's what you want. You know, you're playing high-level teams, man, night in and night out. I mean, look, and it's everybody. But, I mean, we're a quarter of the way into the season. Look at the five teams we've played. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and for us to be on the positive side of that with this five-game stretch, even though, you know, we're, we're really disheartened about tonight, um, we're in a good spot, and we got we to gotta come back. When you drop one, you got to come back. I've said it all year long, just like Rutgers just did. You know, they, they dropped one at home over the weekend. Iowa came in and played great and beat them. You know, you dust yourself off, you come up on the road, and, and you get it back. And, and you could, that's what the good teams do, and, and that's what we're going to have to do. You know, we're going to have to take these couple days, get, it, get ourselves right, and, and take this thing on the road this weekend and see if we can get one uh, in Ann Arbor. Thank you. To follow up on the crowd, the crowd was expanded to, I believe, 200 students more. Did you guys feel that presence? And what did those conversations look like between you and, and AD Derek Gregg to potentially yeah. expand that? Well, me personally, I just said let them all in, <laughs> like just figure it out, you know. But obviously, there there's things administratively. Uh, but we we've always been pro students, you know. I mean, but at the end of the day, too, and in, in in our defense, at times we haven't had that presence. So you know, I think it was it was unbelievable to see the outpouring of support when we came back for that Illinois game, and to give our our administration credit, they responded. You know, they they heard that they heard the students. They said, "Hey, we want more seating. We'll show up." You know, that was my big thing. If I'm I'm willing to give them all the seating they want, but just come and and cheer loud and and hopefully what the students are seeing too. Like when you play in this Big Ten level, man, it's fun. To, it's fun to come out on a Wednesday night and for a couple hours, you know, see a high level game and music's playing and and get invested and 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 that's what's so great about going to a Big Ten school. And so we're we're all for it, man. I'm I'm super pro students being there. That's that's the I've said all along those are the ones we need there the most because their energy you know as as the young fan base is is what's gonna and those are the friends they're the friends of our players I mean that's they're in classes with them they're in the dorms with them they hang out with them you know you're playing and playing in front of your friends so I couldn't be more appreciative of their support um, and like I said it's it's needed you know and and the things we're trying to do and and I just think this group they they deserve it you know, forget about me or coaches or it's about the players. And when you see a team out there fighting, you, you want them to get their home support. And and these last two games, once we've gotten into the conference, you know, our two our our two home games once school is resumed have been fantastic. And we got seven more and we're gonna we're gonna need them each one of those each one of those seven home games again. One more question. Uh, Coach, in your earlier statement, you mentioned discipline. Rutgers got 11 offensive rebounds. They made mm -hmm. 10 of their 19 layup opportunities. What are you going to do in practices to try and fix what seemed to be maybe a little bit of a weakness in the post when it came to getting 50-50 balls? And yeah. Getting... Yeah, you know, I mean, they uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they average over 12 or 13. I mean, they're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And, you know, that was an emphasis for sure. And sometimes it's hard to replicate it in practice. You know, you can do drills, but, you know, if you don't have Cliff Amore and, and, and Hyatt and, and Mag and, and six, seven guards, McConnell and those guys, but you just try to stay true to your habits your, with the things you practice with blockout responsibilities, uh, putting bodies on guys. And then so much of rebounding is, to me is effort. And and hard, you know, and I thought we definitely gave up some second chance points. Uh, there's no question about it. They were plus six on us. You know, we had seven second chance points. They had 13. So in a three point game, you know that can matter. So it's certainly an area we wanted them under 10. You know, we talked about it the last couple of days. Could we keep them in single digits um, on the offensive glass? We weren't able to quite do that, and and I thought they made us pay a little bit, and we got to improve in that area for sure. All right, thanks for coming out, guys. Appreciate it.
Uh, Robbie Barron and Ty Barron, can you please ask each player a direct question to start this question? Uh, what was it like, um, either of you can answer, what was it like to go up against another team that has played just as well defensively as you guys have this year? Uh, we know that that's their, you know, calling card as well. Um, we knew that they would throw us, you know, different looks, um, you know, just try to keep us on our toes. So, you know, really got to give them credit. You know, they were able to, you know, make more plays than us at the end. Um, and yeah, you know, they, they just, you know, that was, that's their style. Um, we just got to be better. Uh, expanded student section and I, what was it like playing in front of such a raucous crowd? Um, the student section was big time again. Um, we, we really um, appreciate when, when they come out and, and show out big. It, it helps us a lot and it builds momentum um, for us out there on the floor for sure. Yeah, definitely. Just second that, you know, it was, it was rocking tonight. It was electric. Um, you know, people were coming in, you know, 90 minutes before the game. And, you know, it's just such a such a great atmosphere. It's just such like a, a lift me up. You know, when we were struggling to score, uh, you know, they, they were always behind us. So, you know, it's huge. You know, words can't really, you know, say. Just psychologically, how do you guys move on from a game like this? You have the lead, you lose it, coming off that big win over Indiana. How do you move on to the next game? You know, I think it's, you know, after a win, we don't get too high, and after a loss, we don't get too low. You know, that's college basketball. You know, college, we got 30 games, 31 games, you know, guaranteed. Um, so, you know, the good thing about, you know, basketball is, you know, we'll, we'll be back at it. You know, we don't got to wait a week to play. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll attack the tape, you know, find ways to get better. Um, and, yeah, you know. You both knocked, you, you two attempted uh, 10 threes combined. You both made two. Did you think coming into the game that Rutgers was going to give you those looks from distance? Was that part of the game, the game plan? Um, no, that, that wasn't a part of our game plan. Um, coaches just tell us all the time to just take our open shots. Um, and, yeah, we, we, we love finding each other and, and trust one another that if they're open, to take it every time. Any more questions? All right, that wraps us up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.